Ezra, Shelashi, three Ezra, four. Then the second, that had spoken of the strength of the king, began to say, O ye men, do not men excel in strength, that bear rule over sea and land, and all things in them? But yet the king is more mighty, for he is lord of all these things, and has dominion over them, and whatsoever he commands them they do. If he bid them make war, the one against the other, they do it. If he send them out against the enemies, they go, and break down mountain walls, rather mountains, walls, and towers. They slay and are slain, and transgress not the king's commandment. If they get the victory, they bring all to the king, as well the spoil as all things else. Likewise for those that are no soldiers and have not to do with wars, but use husbandry, when they have reaped again that which they have sown, they bring it to the king and compel one another to pay tribute unto the king. And yet he is but one man. If he command to kill, they kill. If he command to spare, they spare. If he command to smite, they smite. If he command to make desolate, they make desolate. If he command to build, they build. If he command to cut down, they cut down. If he command to plant, they plant. So all his people and his armies obey him. Furthermore, he lies down, he eats and drinks and takes his rest. And these keep watch round about him. Neither may anyone depart and do his own business, neither disobey him, rather disobey they him in anything. O ye men, how should not the king be mightiest when in such sort he is obeyed? And he held his tongue. Then the third, who had spoken of women and of the truth, this was Zerub Babel, began to speak. O ye men, it is not the great king, nor the great multitude of men, neither is it wine that excels. Who it is, rather, who is it then that rules them, or has the lordship over them? Are they not women? Women have borne the king, and all the people that bear rule by sea and land. Even of them came they, and they nourished them up that planted the vineyards, from whence the wine comes. They also make garments for men. These bring glory unto men, and without women cannot men be. Yea, and if men gathered together gold and silver, or any other goodly thing, do they not love a woman which is comely in favor and beauty? And letting all those things go, do they not gape, and even with open mouth fix their eyes fast on her? And have not all men more desire unto her than unto silver or gold, or any goodly thing whatsoever? A man leaves his own father that brought him up, and his own country, and cleaves unto his woman. He sticks not to spend his life with his woman, and remembers neither father, nor mother, nor country. By this also ye must know that women have dominion over you. Do ye not labor and toil, and give and bring all to the woman? Yea, a man takes his sword, and goes his way to rob and steal, to sail upon the sea and upon rivers, and looks upon a lion, and goes in the darkness, and when he is stolen, spoiled, and robbed, he brings it to his love. Wherefore a man loves his woman better than, better than father or mother. Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women, and become servants for their sakes. Many also have perished, have erred, and sinned for women. And now do ye not believe me? Is not the king great in his power? Do not all regions fear to touch him? Yet did I see him, and 
Apaim, the king's concubine, the daughter of the admirable Bartikus, sitting at the right hand of the king, and taking the crown from the king's head and setting it upon her own head. She also struck the king with her left hand. And yet for all this the king gaped and gazed upon her with open mouth. If she laughed upon him, he laughed also. But if she took away, or rather, but if she took any displeasure at him, the king was fain to flatter that she might be reconciled to him again. O oh, ye men, how can it be but women should be strong, seeing they do thus? Then the king and the princes looked one upon another. So he began to speak of the truth. O oh, ye men, are not women strong? Great is the earth, high is the heaven, swift is the sun in his course, for he compasses the heavens round about and fetches his course again to his own place in one day. Is he not great that makes these things? Therefore great is the truth and stronger than all things. All the earth cries upon the truth and the heaven blesses it. All works shake and tremble at it, and with it is no unrighteous thing. Wine is wicked, the king is wicked, women are wicked, all the children of men are wicked, and such are all their wicked works, and there is no truth in them. In their unrighteousness also they shall perish. As for the truth, it endures and is always strong. It lives and conquers forevermore. With her there is no accepting of persons or rewards, but she does the things that are just, and refrains from all unjust and wicked things, and all men do well like of her works. Neither in her judgment is any unrighteousness, and she is the strength, kingdom, power, and majesty of all ages. Blessed be the Elohim of truth. And with that he held his peace. And all the people then shouted and said, Great is truth and mighty above all things. Then said the king unto him, Ask what you will more than is appointed in the writing, and we will give it to you, because you are found wisest, and you shall sit next to me, and shall be called my cousin. Then said he unto the king, Remember your vow which you have vowed to build Yerushalayim in the day when you come to your kingdom, and to send away all the vessels that were taken away out of Yerushalayim, which Koresh set apart, when he vowed to destroy Babel, and to send them again thither. You also have vowed to build up the temple which the Adamim burned when Yahudah was made desolate by the Kazdim. And now, O Lord the King, this is that which I require and which I desire of you. And this is the princely, rather, princely liberality proceeding from yourself. I desire, therefore, that you make good the vow the performance whereof, with your own mouth, you have vowed to the king of heaven. Then Dariavish the king stood up and kissed him and wrote Sepharim for him unto all the treasurers, rather treasurers and lieutenants and captains and governors, that they should safely convey on their way both him and all, and rather, and all those that go up with him to build Yerushalayim. He wrote Sepharim also unto the lieutenants that were in Silo Aram and Phoenicia, and unto them in Lebanon, that they should bring cedar wood from Lebanon unto Yerushalayim, and that they should build the city with him. Moreover, he wrote for all the Yahudim that went out of his realm up into Yahudah, 
concerning their freedom, that no officer, no ruler, no lieutenant, nor treasurer should forcibly enter into their doors, and that all the country which they hold should be free without tribute, and that the Adamim should give over the villages of the Yahudim which then they held, yea, that there should be yearly given twenty talents to the building of the temple, until the time that it were built, and other ten talents yearly to maintain the burnt offerings upon the altar every day, as they had a commandment to offer seventeen. And that all they that went from Babel to build the city should have free liberty, as well they as their posterity and all the priests that went away. He wrote also concerning the charges and the priests' vestments, wherein they minister, and likewise for the charges of the Leviim, to be given them until the day that the house was finished and Yerushalayim built up. And he commanded to give to all that kept the city pensions and wages. He sent away also all the vessels from Babel that Koresh had set apart, and all that Koresh had given in commandment. The same charged he also to be done, and sent unto Yerushalayim. Now, when this young man was gone forth, he lifted up his face to heaven toward Yerushalayim, and praised the King of heaven, and said, From you comes victory, from you comes wisdom, and yours is the glory, and I am your servant. Blessed are you who have given me wisdom, for to you I give thanks, O Yahuwah of our fathers. And so he took the Sepharim and went out and came unto Babel and told it all his brethren. And they praised the Elohim of their fathers because he had given them freedom and liberty. To go up and to build Jerusalem and the temple which is called by his name. And they feasted with instruments of music and gladness seven days.